How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Sunday, everybody. Wild week of professional wrestling all in next Sunday. Second biggest show AEW has ever done. It's coming up quick, leading into All Out. Also, all in for next year. Big announcement. A lot of people see this as a negative that they're leaving London. I don't see it that way at all. I think this is a great positive. We're going to talk about that in a lot more. Bloodline has attacked Roman. I thought that was an incredible segment. They did a great job. A huge reaction for Roman. I mean, it's fascinating how... This crowd is into nearly everything that everybody is doing. They have so many favorites, so many top guys there. I, I mean, they're on a roll. They've been on. I, I'm going to, when we go to break, I'm going to find out. I'm going to ask our producer, MG, to figure out when this boom started exactly. I don't have the date on me, but we could definitely find it. AW Collision last night. New tag champions. And a new belt design. Dustin has become one of the most uh, accomplished people in the company as his contract is ending. Him and Sammy won the ROH tag titles last night at the last taping in Texas. I thought they did good. You know, there was a lot of questions, and we'll talk about that. I want to get people's opinion on this, but uh, those Texas tapings were not bad. And you know what? It may have led to a much bigger thing, and that's all in Texas. Everything is connected here. All in, Bloodline, Collision, Dynamite, next week's Dynamite, and a whole lot more when we come back. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. So, little, little uh, personal note. I'm sh shocking my kids tomorrow by taking them on a cruise. They have no idea I'm going. And uh, it, while we're recording the show, my entire family's getting ready and they're packing their suitcases because they leave at five o'clock in the morning. Little do they know I'm going also. So I have to pretend now that I'm not going and I got a big week ahead of me to talk about professional wrestling, of course. Let's talk about SmackDown here while well, they're all marching and screaming at each other over the luggage. Nia Jack's championship celebration. Nia won the title at the pay-per-view. Tiffany Stratton is in the ring with Pretty Deadly to announce Nia. A lot of people are tired of this already. Nia tries to get them all to bow to her, but Tiffany says Pretty Deadly is going to sing them a song first. They attempted to sing God Save the Queen. <laughs> okay. Mia Yim attacked. Attacks with a kendo sticks and takes everyone out at the end of the segment. I mean, I, very WWE opening. I We got to see what they're doing here. I don't know. <laughs> do, you, do you think this is a downgrade or do you think this is a plus, MG? Um, well, Mia Yim was a refreshing... Uh break from whatever i was seeing i was yeah. not i was i was like two seconds from hitting the remote control at that it's point. so interesting right because this is yeah. this is a company mm -hmm. firing on all cylinders and on the break before we went to break i i said how you're going to do some research and find out when this boom started right a lot of people mm -hmm. attribute it to vince leaving and that's when everything happened but i i would say it's a little bit the Roman stuff, the bloodline stuff, obviously, when he returned during the pandemic, it continued on and it continued growing. But th this boom that we're seeing, when is the point that we could all look at and say, this is when it happened? Was it Cody returning? Was it Cody's second return? I'm going to track this down on the break because our producer forgot to look into it and he had to go get a, a beverage. Apparently. Coffee. Nothing crazy. Carmelo Hayes defeated Andrade. This went about nine and a half minutes. The story is that Andrade is two and zero over Carmelo. This is this is this looks to be a best of seven at this point. Two and zero, but Hayes would end up with a roll up and get the pin. Afterwards, he would attack Andrade. 
So now they're two and one. And I guess this is going to continue. Andrade's fantastic. You know, there was a lot of fear uh, when he left AEW. I believe I was at his last AEW match, right? That was at World's End. Right? I believe that was World's End. And that was a weird right, thing. Yeah. And I think it was with uh, with Rusev, with Miro. No, I'm Where sorry. That was, that was after. CJ? Or when they were fighting over <laughs> CJ. No, because he was booked in that tournament. And he was booked uh, fantastically. I don't know if that's the same time. But the last couple of months of Andrade's run, I mean, he was really dominant on TV. He was winning in AEW. Uh, he had that weird program with CJ and Miro that went absolutely nowhere, obviously. Where is Miro? Good question. But there was a lot of I questions. I think he's injured. Is he's he? He's got to be injured. Still? Yeah, I'm not I, sure I don't exactly, know. But yeah. Uh, what a... What a so. You know what? That guy has to go back to WWE at this point. He has to. I mean, what is he doing anywhere else? But Andrade is a great example of this. It was a lot of fear. That when he went back to WWE, it was going to be the same old, same old. And they've done some interesting stuff. Obviously, he did the uh, the five-minute match series where he was the champion. I believe he's still the champion, right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't have it on TV. The speed title. The speed champion? Yeah. yeah. Who they is don't the even acknowledge right that. That is so weird. It's Andrade. And and they're uh, they're presenting a women's one next. Yeah. Very 64 soon. days. Yeah, which I think is weird because they don't acknowledge it at all. The only on time, barely, the, uh, honestly, the only time I, I've seen this is on at the SmackDown tapings that I went to that, that I took the kids because he came out and they they recorded this and he did two matches back to back, mm -hmm. which is interesting. See, I'm into in this. Eight <laughs> I, I think Andrade and Carmelo, fantastic stuff. Uh, really, both very talented. It's heightening Carmelo, obviously. Andrade is a tremendous athlete, a tremendous wrestler that I want to see more from. Uh, these are all people that you look at and you say, okay, well, why don't they have an opportunity? Now they have an interesting opportunity here. I'm into this. Blair, Blair Davenport defeated Naomi. This went six minutes and 49 seconds. The match was whatever. It wasn't much heat for the match. Okay. Also, they were in Orlando, so Roxanne Perez was at ringside. I like Roxanne Perez. She has she has it. Whether or not it transitions on the main roster for her, she has it. There was a All graphic. The NXT people were there. By yeah, the yeah, they were in Orlando, and you know what? They got a great crop. This group from NXT is is really good. It's a really good You'll group get of to people. It. You'll get to it in a minute, but yeah. um, Ethan Page didn't exactly get a big pop, though. I I don't know why that is, but... Mm. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of his since his indie days. He was an Evolve mm -hmm. regular. I saw... I, we'll talk about Ethan Page. There was a graphic for Afa. It appeared on the big screen in the arena. There, there was a thank you Afa chant that broke out. Uh, two months apart, Afa and Sika, they both passed away back to back. What's your memories of the Wild Samoans? Do you have any? I, I have some. Um, you know, I my father loved those gimmicks. My father, I mean, listen, my dad grew up in that generation, right? The Russian was, a, was the Russian. The All-American boy was the All-American boy. The Samoans were wild. Uh, uh, yeah, they know, were. Uh, I, the Irish so Chief was, you know, as... spitting. Yeah. The original hot right. Tua, <laughs> Sheiky baby. Wow. Uh, by the way, the Sheik there. was a baby face to me. <laughs> Always, forever. That, but he was misunderstood. He was very uh, misunderstood, so my, the Irish Sheik. So uh, my what memory is yours? of yeah. the Samo Wild Samoans, to me, were that first very scary tag team. The ones that, like, because when I, I was, like, 12 when I really got, like, started seeing it on TV. And they were one of the first. They were the ch tag champs at that time, and they were scary. Yeah, they were. The listen, they you didn't through, see yeah. guys that looked mm -hmm. like that, especially you yep. know. Uh, I very it was they were they were pivotal, you know all those gimmicks. Now you look at it by today's lens, and you're like, well, it's you know, yeah. it's a <laughs> I don't know, you know, can you do this now? Can you say that they're savages and they're wild? You know, different lens. But I'm able to kind of separate that and look at it and, and appreciate what they were doing at the time, you know, and, and it is important to look at things that way. Nothing transitions the way you, you imagine, you know, 20, 30 years from now, things that we're talking about today 
may be taboo. So I, I think they were tremendous. What, what an amazing act. That whole family of, and you know what? They, that entire family is still on top of the wrestling business yep. all these years later, and we'll get to that, obviously. Grayson Waller, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens beat him in four and a half minutes. Ethan Page was ringside with the title. Did not get much of a reaction. This guy is one of my favorites. Um, you know, there are a few of these few of these guys like Ethan Page and Swerve Strickland and Darby Allen. You know, that generation of talent I have seen a lot of on the indies. And it's great to see guys go from a Latin nightclub on Northern Boulevard in Queens with maybe 300 people, thus maybe 200 people, going into a, an arena with 20, 30,000 uh, stadiums with 50, 60,000. I mean, it's, it's amazing to see. Montez Ford, Street Profits, Angelo Dawkins defeated DIY to become the number one contenders for the title. Interesting move. I thought DIY was going to go, but 15 and a half minutes. I like this match. When we come back, I want to take some time on this main segment. Talking about how the Anoas are on top of the business. The Fatus are on top of the business. The Tongans are on top of the business. We're going to talk about this. Amazing stuff. Great reaction for Roman Reigns in the main event segment. When we come back, we're going to talk about this, AEW, and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I ran out of time in that last segment. Do me a favor. Follow me on X at Andrew Zarian. I'm still trying to figure out when, when we could pinpoint. Was there one angle, one moment that created this boom for WWE? You know that Sami Zayn, my producer's in, you know, he's in my ear throughout the show and he's screaming, Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn in the bloodline. I think that was the beginning, but they were still digging out of that Vince McMahon booking. So maybe a little later. I mean, they were they were doing some good stuff. I, I just I'm trying to pin this down if there was a moment. It would, it's definitely before Dwayne came back. It's definitely before CM Punk came back. So if we're like this, maybe, maybe it was a year ago over, maybe exactly a year ago. We got to say, I'm sure a lot of you guys have suggestions. I'm going to tweet me, X me and I'll, it'll ring a bell. Roman Reigns' music hit. So what happened? Solo Soko is in the ring. He tries to get the Orlando crowd to acknowledge him. Instead, they were chanting OTC, the original tribal chief. Roman's music hit. Crowd went bonkers i don't know the, I, this new theme it's growing on me i don't love it but this is only my personal opinion i know a lot of people love this new theme solo took the ula fala apologize for people that uh for my mispronunciation there he took his ula fala off and handed it to tonga roman and solo traded blows reigns hit a clothesline tama tonga then attacked Reigns, but Reigns came back after him with a slam. Roman would eventually get the Ula Fala, the, the, the necklace that he wears, the traditional necklace. And you know, a lot of people were speculating. Jacob Fatu will not, Roman and Jacob Fatu are being kept away. They're not going to touch because that's a big program. I, I actually, out of all those matches, I, I don't have much yep. interest in Solo Sokoa and Roman. I, I, you know, at least I don't know why. Maybe that's me. But Jacob Fatu is fascinating to me. By the way, another guy I've seen on the Indies, another guy that is tremendous. And man, he, he, it's like he's been there forever. No rust, nothing. He just fit in so perfectly. Jacob Fatu returns wearing a walking boot, by the way. But he didn't seem to slow him down. He still had it on. He got the upper not hand on Roman. No, not at all. <laughs> I know he had the boot on, but he was still doing everything. <laughs> he got the upper hand, and they all ended up uh, triple teaming Roman. They triple power bombed him. I love that the lore of that triple power bomb still goes back to the shield, and they've all been yep. using it. They triple power bombed him uh, through the table at the end of the show, and he gained, uh, you know, solos back on uh, on top. It, really cool stuff. So this trip, this this begs the question: Where do they go from here? Who's showing up? Someone's gonna. 
There was an Uso be. chant. I mean, the Usos mm -hmm. have to show up at this point, right? I mean, that's yeah. So you're gonna that, that's how you kind of even out the numbers well, a little bit, but they're, they're so still there at an a, advantage. So there was a there was kind of a plot hole in the show because uh, during the dark match, Jey Uso was yeah. in the dark match, the yeah, dark main event. So people were like, "Why didn't he help?" <laughs> well, maybe it's for shit because uh, because because yeah. he's not that doesn't exist in the storyline. The TV yeah, show exactly. doesn't exist in the in the actual uh, dark match <laughs> segment. So listen, maybe that's the that's the foreshadowing. Like, oh, he is there. He was there, and he didn't help. Why? Does he still have beef with Roman? Which you know, is this line, is, he probably should. Uh, of course know? he should. They should all have a problem with Roman. His ego took over. He broke up the family. He was he was an egomaniac. It got too powerful. You know, it, in reality, sure. But I liked it. It was good stuff. It, it was a good, good SmackDown. I, I enjoyed this. Uh, next segment, I want to talk about the, some of the news. But I want to go into collision before we go in, into anything. Because All In is shaping up. Next Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, perfect, an afternoon wrestling show. My, my dream, that is my dream. Britt Baker opened up defeating Harley Cameron. They showed a clip from Wednesday of Baker attacking Mercedes Monet. I, I thought they did too much here. After the match, Mercedes and, and Camille, I don't want to get yelled at by a certain friend of the show that I get a summary of all my mistakes. And I absolutely adore these messages that come in. Camille came out, because I called her Camille last, last time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Monet sent Camille to the ring with Baker responding uh, by fishing a kendo stick from under the ring. Camille took the kendo stick, broke it over her knee to show how big and strong she is, and booted Baker in the face. Camille then carried Baker into the ring before dumping her with a dominator. Mercedes and Camille stood over Baker to end the segment. I Britt, mean, I, Britt sold the hell out of this, actually. She sold she really everything. Did. By the way, the match with Harley mm -hmm. Cameron, she was selling and selling and selling. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. She should have come out. I kind of forgot how good she was, actually. You know? Yeah. She's been I, gone for so long. She was just selling, and I and I feel like it took the crowd away a little bit mm -hmm. from it. But listen, I, I mean, if this is if this is the go home, I guess they're gonna they're gonna do something again, you know, where maybe she gets the upper hand on Mercedes. But I don't know. I kind of wanted them to stay away a little bit, but well, that's only well. Me. We'll talk about what's going on on, but newsflash. <laughs> um, Mercedes is fighting Soraya at the uh, Wales show. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, ROH World Tag Team Championship. Dustin Rhodes and Sammy Guevara defeated the Undisputed Kingdom, Matt Taven and Mike Bennett, to win the Ring of Honor Tag Titles. You know, this is an interesting move. And I, I, I think we're starting to see something happen with Ring of Honor. This is me being a little bit of a detective and filling in blanks here. When Tony mentioned his openness to having Ring of Honor be an AEW branded show, it said a lot to me based on things that I've heard. You know, this is an idea that was pitched a long time ago and a lot of people were against it. They didn't want, they really didn't want to blur the line which they always did. There was a ton of Ring of Honor presence on TV, but Ring of Honor has always been presented as its own thing. We're starting to see this change. Dustin and Sammy winning the titles. Uh, interesting move. Dustin is now a double champion. By the way, this match had everything happen. There was a ton of run-ins that happened. Uh, the Von Erics were there. Uh, just a lot of moving parts here. All the tag teams. Every there. tag team was there. <laughs> Uh, I was so happy to see Dustin. Great ending. Dustin hit his move. Sammy from the top rope. Uh, fantastic stuff. So I do have a question for you yes, sir. about this. Give me. So I, I, there was a couple of people, not a lot, but there was a couple of people complaining online that this is taking a spot away from somebody else. Who? By putting it on uh, Dustin. Who, who's it taking um, away from? Mm, 
Uh, for I, that's what I'm asking you. Do you feel that way? Because obviously, I don't think you do. <laughs> no, not at all. Mm. I don't. I don't. I don't subscribe to the belief of if you're a certain age, you should be off TV because you're taking the spot away from someone. Dustin's not he in the main event. Go. He's not. He's yeah, not. He's, he's not mm. the world champion. And the dude still performs tremendously. He's still. He's a great mentor to these guys. Um, who's it taken away from? If Would anything, it have mattered if it was someone else? Yeah. If anything, he's helping like elevate the elevate that brand a little bit by just his name. His name. That's yeah. what they need. Yeah. I don't know. I I think people listen. Uh, we are we are such an overly critical society now. Nobody with normal eyes that's watching the show is like, you know, damn it, Dustin should. No he's taking a spot away from someone. He's still going. He's still great. Why can't he still do it? Ageists. All these people are ageists. Someone said that to me about Steve Austin. They said, I don't want to see Steve Austin wrestle again. He's taking a spot away from someone. I go, okay, I guess we don't, we don't support the biggest blockbuster names in wrestling to ever do anything anymore. If they can, why years. not? Do if they can, two years, basically. why can't we do it? FTW champion Chris Jericho was with Renee backstage. He would face Tommy Billington on Dynamite in Wales. He called himself a modern-day Stu Hart and said Dynamite <laughs> Kid would, would be... Dynamite, this, Dynamite Kid would not appreciate Tommy Billington, would not like Tommy Billington. All right, dude, we're getting Chris Jericho and Tommy Billington, the Dynamite Kid, and Chris Jericho in Wales. <laughs> what's old is Hi, new. What's, old, what's new is old. <laughs> Hologram defeated Angelico. <laughs> People, they like hologram. They're into hologram in Texas. Let's see when they leave Texas if that works. Non-title match, you got TNT champion Jack Perry defeating Danny Orion. Interesting stuff in this match. He spray-painted half of Orion's face with white spray paint. And, uh, and he had a body bag. He painted his face. He stuffed them in it. And then he took out the TNT title that was personalized. It was like disheveled looking. It was spray painted black with like chipping paint. And it was like a veiny leather. He got a custom belt. I wanted to say 90210 on it. Na 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 na. I would have loved it. Claudia defeated Leo Rush. We got a video package from Eddie Kingston from home. He did not look great. He's still injured. He was talking about Brian Danielson and how he doesn't think he's ready. And he's not willing, maybe, not willing to go all the way. All right, I guess we're building something for later, maybe. Or this is a motivational speech. When we come back, we're going to talk about the final couple of matches. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. I... Totally ran out of time the last segment. I've been doing that a lot more. I don't know why. I have no idea. Mariah May defeated London Dior after the match. We got a Tony Storm film entitled The Final Gift. You know, they have built this really well. I, I thought the last two weeks, AEW's done a tremendous job at building this card. I would have liked to see it a few weeks sooner, but we're here. Main event of Collision for the for an AEW World Championship title match at Wembley at All In. FTR versus the Acclaimed. Ended in a time limit draw. Now, both teams will challenge for the title. It will be a triple threat at All In. Speaking of All In, you know, Tony last week tweeted that the biggest announcements in AEW will be coming. Something along those lines. Obviously, a lot of people were uh, speculating that this is the announcement for the new deal. Tony's walking around with a WBD hat. He met off. He met up with Zasloff a few weeks ago in Paris. This was, I guess, one of the many that's coming. AEW announces All in Texas Stadium show, July 2025. So they've moved the date up. Thank God. This is a positive now. You know why? Yeah, it's it, it has to do with um. Well, there's a couple of reasons, but the main reason yeah. is availability of that stadium 
because it's All Star Week. It's All Star Week, yeah. So the so, the teams are off, so they yes. have that stadium's going to be open for a week. Okay, so here here's here's something that I've always um, has always tickled me about running one of these stadium shows around this time, right? You need X amount of days for setup and breakdown. There was a time that City Field was considered for a show. And it wasn't enough for WWE. And it wasn't enough. This is like, I don't know if it would have been, uh, well, it probably would have been for like a SummerSlam. And they didn't have enough time to break and put together. It was, a, it was an away stretch that the Mets had. And it was like one day short. So I'm curious how many days they are off that from the setup to them entering, you know, uh, them needing the stadium that they need for the setup and breakdown. It would I'm probably curious. be a week. And this is a more modern stadium, so I imagine there's it's, there's uh, less yeah. uh, uh, there less technological like it's, yeah. It's easier to set up and take down and not ruin this uh, ruin the turf. Yeah, Globe so Life Stadium, be beautiful. Thing. It's yeah. a beautiful stadium in Arlington, Texas. A lot of people are thinking, oh, this is such a disappointment. They're not running Cowboy. Why would you think they could do a hundred thousand people in that building? Let's be realistic. This is a nice size building, 40,000 people. They could do 36. They could do 45. They could do 40. This could be scaled. I think this will be a fine building for them as long as the program works. Uh, it's All-Star Week, so the Rangers will be off, like my producer said. Uh, the lead-up will also feature a series of events in Arlington that will be announced in the, the future. Again. The, right. I guess they'll that's do a summer series, and that's great. Fantastic. During the press conference with city officials, Tony, Tony, AEW head Tony Khan also confirmed that All In will return to London in 2026. But he didn't say, did he say All In will return to London in 2026? He did. He did, yes. But where? Mm. He said Wembley. Did he say Wembley? Mm, yeah, but I don't yeah. think that nothing's been booked yet or anything, but yeah. Mm. I don't know, man. I, I, why? I mean, it's going to depend on whether or not it's hot. That's why I think you leave it open ended, and if you need to run a stadium or run an arena yeah. instead of a stadium, you can. Khan called the Texas event the first ever stadium show in the U.S. Hey, Tony, did you forget about about that little thing that you got going in Queens? A grand slam at Arthur Ashe. Stadium, not arena, not ballpark, not complex, not a coliseum. It's a stadium. I think it's semantics. <laughs> semantics. Yeah, I can't believe. How dare Tony disrespect queens like that? My people. I'll be there, by the way. I'll be at Grand Slam. Always a fun show. All right. So here is what we are looking for. This is the Wales show on Wednesday. I can't believe we are at the end of summer already. AW World, AW Women's World Champion Tony Storm will defend against Soraya. AW Continental Champion Okada defends against Claudio. This has to lead into a match for Okada at this show. It does. I can't see him not being on this okay. show. Okay, that would be. I, I'll be disappointed. I, I would be very disappointed. MJF and Will Ospreay face to face. Hook and Big Bill. Don't we also have Tommy Billington and Jericho? When it, where is that? That that got added after I put this yeah. in there. But yes, you are. And we correct. got Tommy Billington and, and Jericho. AW All In card. This is as of after Collision. Zero hour. You have Willow Nighting, and that was I believe Willow. Um, Willow's also. I maybe that wasn't announced. I don't know. Zero hour. Willow Nightingale. Tomohiro Ishii versus Chris Statlander, Stokely Hathaway. Winner will get to pick the stipulation for Nightingale and Statlander CMLL title match at All Out. So we're seeing the build for All Out here. FTW champion Chris Jericho defends against Hook. A casino gauntlet match for, the, for a future AEW world title shot. Uh, I'm very curious who's in this. The way it was said to me is that they were not going to... Uh, they were not going to make this just like a random who's who or who's not. It's going to be, they're going to have some names in here. TBS champion Mercedes Monet defends against Britt Baker. AW tag team titles, the Young Bucks defend against the Acclaimed and FTR. 
Ladder match for the AW Trios title. The Patriarchy. Christian Cage, Kill Switch, and Nick Wayne defend against the Bang Bang Gang. House of Black and Turnbuckle Al. So they're doing a... Uh, TBA. A so so for that person that's going to text me, or... I got to give him my little jokes. Turnbuckle Al, that's TBA. <laughs> Turnbuckle Dan, TB de to be determined. So this is... They're Who's doing Al? a match. They're... They're doing that match on um, uh, Dynamite, which I didn't add as well because yeah. they just announced it. Where they're going to be announcing, uh, I, it's like two teams, and they're it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a top flight. Is who I think okay. it'll end up being. That'll be that's a great ladder match to have. Mm -hmm. TNT champion. Yeah, that'll be the fourth team. TNT champion Jack Perry defends against Darby Allen in a coffin match. AW American champion. MJF defends against Will Ospreay. AEW World Women's Champion Tony Storm defends against Mariah May. And the world champion, Swerve Strickland, defends against Brian Danielson. If Brian cannot win this match, he has to retire. His career is on the line. I love Swerve. I think he's great. I think that Danielson needs his belt. AEW needs Danielson to have this title. And I'm going to explain to you why. The pedigree, the, the heritage of this title is built uh, for any world title, is built of your former champions. Having a Brian Danielson as a champion, having a Samoa Joe as your champion, having a CM Punk as your champion tells a story for all that's coming after. Swerve is in... Some really tremendous, uh, uh, you know, he's in the company of some really tremendous champions. It only adds more. Do I want to see Swerve lose? No, I think he's great. But you have an opportunity. You have a Brian Danielson, one of the biggest names from the 2010s. Unfortunately, he got hurt and they have a stop and go. But that movement, that yes movement brought a lot of people back to wrestling, much like how Bullet Club brought people back to wrestling and how CM Punk brought people back to wrestling and AEW brought people back to wrestling. Danielson is one of those key guys. You're going into a new contract. You're going into building your TV up again. The optics of seeing Brian Danielson and the crowd pointing their fingers up and chanting yes, even though he can't, and him with a world championship goes a long way. Is he the guy to lead you throughout the next contract on TV? No, he's not because his body is broken down and he doesn't want to wrestle that much. But man, if you could get a couple months with him doing something tremendous, have him do this, have him at All Out, have him do Grand Slam, maybe he drops it at World's End and now we're done. He could go away for a little bit and then come back. I'm just, listen, I'm just fantasy booking here, but the truth is, I believe Brian Danielson would be positive in the long run. Very positive. To be world champion in that company. Not a negative. Also, listen. Also, Kenny Omega's coming back. Right? That, that's going to happen. I don't know when. So when Danielson leaves, you have another piece that, that fills in that blank. Very important. Very important. Let's talk about the G1. This was really good. Um, a lot of the key people that should have done well did really well here. Yoda Suji being one. Which you're a fan of. Which I'm a huge fan of. Zack Sabre Jr. defeated Yoda Suji early this morning on Sunday to win the G1 tournament for the first time. He said he wants to have his IWGP heavyweight title match at King of Pro Wrestling, which is scheduled for October 14th. That is interesting. He's it not seems saving to be leading it. leading to something else. Yeah, yeah he's not mm -hmm. saving it for the for uh, Russell Kingdom. Which I thought. So, uh, I guess I guess I did never really realize this that you could just cash it in whenever you wanted. You didn't have to wait till Russell Kingdom. I guess I guess that's the case. Because I thought that was I thought it was a guaranteed shot at Russell Kingdom, but. Maybe that isn't the case. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Good, well deserved. Zack Sabre Jr., one of the best wrestlers in the world. Yoda Suji did tremendous. He's my personal favorite in, in, in New Japan. Also, Takeshita 
Uh, that was great to see him there. They did a lot with him. This was a nice little uh, trip for him. Really good stuff. Also, I wanted to mention this. AW has well... This was interesting, the story. AW has well advanced plans to run an Australian stadium show in 2025. According to the sports according to the sports news out of Australia, the plan is for the company to debut in the country and well advanced planning and that AEW power brokers have been scouting venues along Australia's eastern coast. Okay. That's cool. I I, I mean, think that's a good show Andrew. <laughs> I know, I know, and that's a and that's a morning show, not an afternoon show, and that's a morning show. What time would it be on? Ten o'clock, eleven o'clock? Great. Get my coffee. Depends on when they. It depends on what time in Australia they do it. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what? Good stuff. They are preparing for the next two years. They're talking about twenty twenty six. They're talking about twenty twenty five. This does not sound like a company that is a little nervous about a rights deal. A little nervous about positioning on TV. Again, you have to look at things a little bit more than just the surface. A company that is that that may not have a good you know TV deal or maybe maybe fearing a crunch in financials does not book an Australian stadium show. Does not talk about returning back to Wembley. These are all interesting stuff. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Island. We'll be back right after this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Final segment of the show. Final few minutes of the show. Triple Mania. I didn't get to this. You know, this is the most beautiful thing about professional wrestling, right? People get so invested in everything that's happening and everybody's opinion is different. And, and the new state of pro wrestling is amazing. We're back to random guys showing up on big shows, you know, and it being this blend of people. That Triple Mania show, JBL walked out Nick Nemeth, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, who lost, by the way. Who lost, yeah. <laughs> to someone uh, I never thought would be back in wrestling. Uh, you want to you wanna tell them who he lost to? Uh, Alberto El Patron. Alberto and, Del which, Rio. Which, by the way, looked jacked. I don't know what he's on, but boy, or if he's on anything or just in good health, he looks good. Uh, listen, I, I hope he has his problems fixed. fixed yes. Whatever it is. I, I, I champion people to do well in life. I He has had numerous legal issues and uh, alleged kidnappings and, and all this terrible stuff. He was a disaster. I, I hope that he is on a, uh, on a positive path here. But we, we got some really interesting stuff. Matt, Matt Riddle was on this. He defeated Commander. Uh, he won the AAA um, Cruiserweight Championship, which is so strange to see him as a Cruiserweight. Uh, Del Rio, Nick Nemeth. It was an interesting show. I caught bits and pieces of this. I need to watch the entire thing. But fun times we're in, in the world of pro wrestling. Next week, we got a huge show. We're going to bash at Berlin after that. We got All Out coming after that. Grand Slam and everything else happening in pro wrestling. Next week, we'll be back talking about All In and everything that happened after that show. We'll see you all next time. Wrestling Observer Live.